The 1976 UNH Wildcats made football history, and it all began to unfold at the stadium of the UMass Minutemen. Over 5,000 New Hampshire fans traveled from Durham to watch their defending champions in the Yankee Conference Championship. UNH in white. Sophomore Bill Logue stacks the quarterback on a two-yard gain here at the tackle slot. Doug Stockbridge now stops a two-yard gain. A defensive end of the draw play as Logue helps out. Quarterback McNally now will go back to throw. Linebacker Charlie McMahon is in the cover and the pass is overthrown. The Minutemen now have to punt. Return specialist Tim Benson is back on his own 35-yard line. Good foot into the ball. Benson takes it on one bounce, and here he goes. Benson was within one man of breaking it for the distance. After moving to the 39-yard line, Jeff Allen runs the option left. The pitch will go to tailback Bill Burnham. A great block by Tim Pendry as Burnham goes for seven. Allen will now throw to Lee Pope on the right sideline. Good blocking by tackle Brad Sloat and John Merrill, but the drive stalled after that 12-yard pickup. The Wildcats again from their 46. Jeff Allen throwing over the middle to Dave Lowley, coming out of the backfield. Great moves as Lowley eludes tacklers for 12 yards. Allen will go right this time to Lee Pope on the right sideline, and that is another nine-yard gain. With good play action here, Allen goes back and sets. Throws left, that's Ray DePietro, and another good catch going out of bounds. Now the pitch will be to tail back Lowley with a good block by tight end Bill Ward. But a fumble stopped that drive, and the game is still scoreless. UNH is back in defense. This is in Bill Diedrich and Charlie McMahon stopping the play cold. But UMass still doesn't believe that New Hampshire defensive line. Co-captain Bruce Hutter leads the rush with McMahon. The entire left side of the New Hampshire line comes into play as UMass tries their own right tackle slot. They're forced to give up the ball, but the game's still scoreless. Later, deep in their own territory, Bill Lowe catches the halfback from behind, and he goes nowhere. Now the bootleg, but watch left defensive end Bill Diedrich. He's got it cold for an eight-yard loss. Backed up against their own goal line, Mike Marchese will come in from the right side of the New Hampshire line and put a wicked hit on the ball carrier. The ball pops loose, and New Hampshire recovers. Number 18 is Rod Langway, showing enthusiasm, as Sean McDonald, number 33, comes up with the ball. New Hampshire dominated on defense. They never let UMass up. The Minutemen did not get a first down in this half and were held at 29 yards rushing in the entire game. Here, Sam Chekovich boots a 26-yard field goal, and the Wildcats are on the board. They lead 3 to nothing in what has become one of the top football meetings in New England. Good trap blocking now coming up by co-captain John Merrill and Glenn Lissette as Bill Burnham springs the right side for 26 yards. Burnham again on the sprint draw for seven more yards for New Hampshire, but the dry stalled and New Hampshire has to start another. Tim Pendry now on a quick opener from fullback. Watch this, it breaks fast. Pendry goes for 34 big yards and deep into UMass territory. And then the flag and 15 more is added. Now Allen, looking at the defense carefully, will call for the ball. And on the run, throw to Gary DiStefano, and it's eight more yards. Coming up, a great catch by Ray DiPietro. Allen looking, there's Ray. The great catch, DiPietro takes it for the touchdown. He's mauled by teammates with number 49, John Buckley, and number 36, Burnham, among them. This was a great day for DiPietro, the best game of his UNH career. And he earned the applause of these happy UNH fans on a cold day in Amherst as the Wildcats now went up on top by a 9 to nothing score. And speaking of number 36, here's Bill Burnham showing you why he was named New England College Player of the Year. The half ended with UNH holding that 9 to nothing lead. The Wildcats in defense now. Sophomore linebacker Rod Langway comes to the UNH's left, and Neil speeds to Rich Jessamy with a perfect hit. Now Charlie McMahon and Sam Chekovich go after the speedy Jessamy, and they show what pursuit is all about. 
what's left this time. Inside the cornerback, Doug Stockbridge will burst through and nail the quarterback. And then UNH to offense. Quarterback Jeff Allen strikes quickly. He fires a bullet to Ray DiPietro. The Wildcat flanker is off to the races. He streaks for the end zone for a second touchdown grab of the day. It's a 50-yard Allen to DiPietro pass play for the touchdown, and Ray loves every minute of it as his club goes up by a 16-0 score. Again, the Wildcat fans strike it up at the Minutemen Stadium with the day cold, but the Cats hot. The UMass quarterback will now try to get his team going on a keeper, but tough Doug Stockbridge just won't let him go. A new quarterback comes in for UMass. Bill Diedrich goes right after him, and he forces a run out of the scramble with linebacker Bruce Hutter covering well in the play. That's the first minute, men, first down. Quarterback Foley will go to the air and to the left. Cornerback Frank Mucci stepped in front and almost picked it off for the distance. Foley goes to the air again. He'll sprint right this time, and he fires deep. But Mucci is hawking the ball, and he picks it off out of bounds. Quarterback Foley again. He fades. Finds a receiver to the right, but Rod Langway tips it away. Fourth down now, and UMass is desperate. Foley is smothered by Regan McCarthy, Doug Stockbridge, and the happy Wildcats, who nail the Minutemen at every turn, and the fans love it. New Hampshire attacks again. Jeff Allen hits a wide open Dave Lowley, but clipping moves this big game back. Allen comes right this time, but throwing back left again to Lowley, and the elusive tailback puts on some good moves for another game. With the ball down to the five yard line, watch the halfback pass with Burnham to the right. There he is, fires. Bill Worf, a touchdown at number 88, deserves the plaudits he gets for an outstanding season. The fans don't mind the cold day now as UNH goes on top by a score of 23 to nothing. But talented Doug Stockbridge was one of the stars that made defense the name of the game on this day, like sacking the quarterback. Then a draw, and outstanding sophomore Bill Lowe keeps the tailback from going anywhere. And like this, Joe Marinelli stopped as the defensive tackle had a big year for the Wildcats. Now fullback John Buckley fakes to the line while George Cavadonna takes the pitch out with sophomore Tom Ruffin blocking well. And what's the future for the running of sophomore Bill Hagan? Like the tackles that he breaks here as time runs out. And the UNH Wildcats belt out a 23 to nothing victory. UMass was stunned. The Wildcats totally dominated in every phase of the game. It was the first time since 1947 that New Hampshire football teams pulled off back-to-back -back Yankee Conference championships. And just two weeks after winning this game, the Wildcats were invited to play Montana State in the Division II playoffs in Bozeman, Montana. It was the first time in UNH history that New Hampshire football teams had reached the playoffs in two consecutive years. But there was still more to enjoy here. A win over UMass is relished long and deep, and especially a championship, like Coach Bill Bowes carried on the shoulders of co-captains John Merrill and Bruce Hutter. This young Penn State graduate and Nittany Lion football captain had just brought UNH football to its most successful peak ever. With a group of players and coaches who show class in everything they do, the UNH Wildcats had just finished doing what no other New Hampshire team has done. Former college quarterback and team friend John Delasola piloted the team to Montana. The Hampshire Governor Melvin Thompson, wearing the TAM, was the first off the plane, joined by UNA President Eugene Mills. At the airport to welcome Governor Thompson, along with host and admissions director Gene Savage, is the governor of Montana and university officials. With a practice schedule the day before the game, the team is brought together for its noon meal. Big appetites for a big effort. Backfield coach Steve Stetson takes charge of his practice. Offensive line coach Joe Leslie watches the Wildcats with a critical eye. Into Saturday morning, head coach Bill Bowes meets with the quarterbacks as he usually does. 
Jeff Allen to the left, Tom Levitt to the right. Linebacker coach Dave O'Connor takes to the blackboard. There's receiver coach Don Catton. And for more illustration, Juni Carbonell with the defensive line. This is Big Sky Country, and this is it, the Division II showdown. Montana State was ranked number one in the country going into this game. They are also the rushing leaders of the nation in Division II. But the Wildcats are ready. They proved their worth with the best in the country last year, and they're ready to do it again at Montana. Led out of the field by head coach Bill Bowles, the young Wildcat mentor now paces the sidelines in deep thought. He knows the game ahead is a tough one, but he knows his club is a good one. Montana State has won the toss, and they elect to receive. Their first march goes to the University of New Hampshire 25, but the defense stiffens when Rod Langway and Mike Marchese stop the tailback. Tackle Joe Marinelli and end Bill Diedrich now get tough, and they stop the play for another small two-yard gain. On third down, Montana is going to go for six with a rolled out pass to the right. Frank Mucci recovers well, intercepts, and as the sophomore comes over here to the sidelines, defensive backfield coach Dino Foligno is swarming on him as the Montana drive is stopped. On the very first UNH play from scrimmage, Bill Burnham takes an Allen handoff and slips outside right tackle, rips off 26 yards that put Montana on notice. Burnham in the tail end of the I formation. Don Walfrey, Brad Sloat, and Merrill do some good blocking as the tailback hits the middle and cuts back for a good game. A missed field goal stopped this drive. Bill Wharf, Hendry, and Merrill are all blocking well as Dave Lowley rips around the right side with some good hard running. And to show you how close UNH came to scoring early, Jeff Allen will spot a wide open Denny Willette on the right side and just overthrows. Montana came right back to the UNH 35, but Mike Marchese and Charlie McMahon team for the hit and just a short game. Bill Lowe penetrates well on this play, and linebacker Rod Langway stops the fullback for a loss. Now the quarterback tries to go left, but Marchese with number 81, Bill Diedrich, they rack him up near the sideline. Montana to punt, but wait, this could be a fake. Montana State is known for this, they've done it before. Will the UNH line diagnose it, or will they come charging? It is a fake, but freshman linebacker Greg Donahue and tackle Logue, they make the stop. Into the second period, and is still scoreless. Montana to the left, and met by Sam Chekovich, Bruce Hutter, and Stockbridge. Montana, third and long, a good play call here. That's Bill Logue to close the gap. Now Montana will get their score. It's an excellent call, a flanker reverse right coming from the left. It catches New Hampshire flat-footed as the flanker streaks down the sideline and puts the ball in scoring position and a 10 to nothing lead. Now Jeff Allen will go to work and he throws on the money to lead Pope in the right sideline. New Hampshire trails and they know they have to move the football. This is that same play from ground level. Allen, who threw 49 times in the game, takes the ball, and he fades back. He's looking right for Pope. He spots him, and there goes the ball, a perfect pass by quarterback Jeff Allen. It was a cold day for the floor end receiver with a temperature at 23 degrees. Allen now fades to the tailback, and he will look left. There's Ray DePietro, and the senior has it for an 18-yard gain on the left sideline. Again, Allen calling for the ball. He goes right this time, and wham, spots Denny Willett and lays a bullet in there. Allen ready again. Goes left this time, and he hits DePietro on the left sideline. Ray also breaks it down that sideline as he roars down to the six-yard line. From ground level now, here's how that pass looks to the receiver as it comes out of the backfield. And it shows the speed of Ray DePietro as he eludes tacklers down that left sideline. Almost scoring. 
Sam Chekovich boots three as the defense stiffened and time was running out in the half. The score, 10 to three. In the second half, Allen riddled the Montana secondary. In this play, a strike to Ray DePietro on the right sideline. Bill Ward points out the first down. John Merrill and Ward lead the way as Dave Lowley sweeps right for six yards. Now watch the immense pressure on Allen as he flips the ball to Bill Wharf, carrying tacklers in a 15-yard game. Allen gets the team set. Looks right, fires left to Denny Willett. But Montana stopped the drive and went on to score with the Wildcats trailing by 14 and into the fourth period. Allen is throwing beautifully in this ball game now. Here's a bullet to the left. It'll go to Lee Pope. Center Don Walpop ready to snap to Allen. Jeff goes right for number 30 again of Ray DePietro. He's got it. He picks up 11. Now watch the work of Allen and Lowley. Allen will be hit as he throws. Lowley takes the strike, cuts to the left. Good blocks by Lissette and Pope, and this outstanding sophomore is off on a big 47-yard jot. Let's take a look at that again in close-up. Notice the good moves and the speed of the New Hampshire tailback. Get a good look at those six big Montana players in pursuit of Lowley. This is a great pass by Allen as the quarterback rolls right, waiting to the last second. Threads a needle to Lee Pope and the touchdown. On the replay, notice the little room that Allen has to complete the pass and the time that he takes with the rollout. Good play by Pope to stay inbounds. Defensive backfield star Sam Chekovich, who came on in the Dartmouth game after kicker Scott Sarah was hurt, booted the ball through for the extra point, and UNH is now a touchdown away. They need the football, and good defense is going to have to get it. Freshman Greg Donahue stops the option call off to his right side. The New Hampshire defense was so tough at this point that Montana had to pass with a seven-point lead late in the game, and great secondary coverage breaks it up. On third down, they try again with a run option right this time, but Donahue comes in to stop the quarterback with help from Doug Stockbridge. With Montana forced to punt and time running out, Tim Benson is back to fair catch for New Hampshire, but they'll have an opportunity to score and go ahead in this game. Jeff Allen goes right to the ear, fading back, a quick eight-yard toss to Bill Worth. Allen will now show his running ability. It's an option left. He watches carefully for a receiver and runs for the first down. Tackle Bill Burnham. Now takes the handoff, and he smacks the guard slot for five more yards. Allen again, threading the needle through several defenders as tight end Bill Worth slugs out a 17-yard gain. From the line of scrimmage, here's how quick that Allen release is and the strong running of war. Now the decision from the bench. Coach Bowes has seconds to decide. In it goes with the receivers, including number 32, Lee Pope. And Allen is ready, firing beautifully. He goes to a leaping Pope in the end zone and New Hampshire has scored. They are now within one point of Montana. Governor Thompson with his son Peter in the middle and admissions director Gene Savage are staying right with the Wildcats and enjoying this great performance to the hill. Now at ground level, here's Allen firing over that big Montana line. Perfect strike to the receiver. New Hampshire had favored Montana on the ropes. Just one more point and the comeback would be complete. This was the moment and it was tense. Watch on the right side, the big right end of Montana comes flying in. Chekovich gets it away, but it was just inches wide on the right side, and UNH must get the ball back. Montana's careful now. They don't want to cough up the football. Charlie McMahon and Greg Donahue combined to stop the tailback. 
Sophomore Bill Loeb joins Donahue and the pair pile up the Montana running back on another down. Third down coming up, Regan McCarthy, co-captain Hother and Loeb all refuse to give ground. UNH will get that football. And with just seconds left, a spectacular play by Allen. He bootlegs left on the dead run he fires. That ball goes 70 yards in the air as it just barely misses a flying leap bolt. New Hampshire nearly pulled off the impossible. Now, a close look at a major league arm by the UNH quarterback. Watch his feet in the run. And how close Pope comes to making this catch. A beautiful try by Allen and Pope. A proud but disappointed Coach Bowles congratulates Montana coach Sonny Holland. In an official press release after Montana won the national championship, Holland rated New Hampshire as the toughest team played in the tournament. The 17-16 loss to Montana State in quest of the Division II national championship was heartbreaking, but it was still a great year for the New Hampshire Wildcats. They won the Yankee Conference for the second straight year. This was the second consecutive year that New Hampshire was selected for the national playoffs. They made the people of New Hampshire and all of New England proud of what they accomplished in the football field. Under the directorship of affable Andy Meradian and the coaching staff of Bill Bowes, the New Hampshire Wildcats have done a terrific job of portraying the image of New England college football and leading it to the equal of the best in the nation. As a result, many individual awards and honors were bestowed on the football team. Earning selection on the All-Yankee Conference team were offensive tackle Wayne Smith, offensive guard and Wildcat co-captain John Merrill, running back Bill Burnham, quarterback Jeff Allen, defensive end Doug Stockbridge, and linebacker and Wildcat co-captain Bruce Huther. Named to the Yankee Conference second team were tight end Bill Worf, offensive guard Glenn Lissette, and linebacker Dick Duffy. Selected to the All New England team were these Wildcats. A first team selection, outstanding running back Bill Burnham. To second team All New England, linebacker Bruce Hutter, linebacker Dick Duffy, and offensive guard John Merrill. And then selected to coveted positions on the Division II All East team were these players. Running back Bill Burnham, guard John Merrill, linebacker Bruce Hutter, linebacker Dick Duffy, and defensive end Doug Stockbridge. And for the most coveted award of all, New Hampshire's Bill Burnham was named the Division II Player of the Year in the East, and then topped that one off with a position on the first team as Kodak All-American. And it was this great team who did the job under one of the younger head coaches in the nation and a former Penn State football captain, New Hampshire's Bill Bowes, who was named District One Kodak Coach of the Year. And that was New Hampshire football in the bicentennial year of 1976.